About a year before the Finlays hit with the touch of her flesh, they were finding their voice with Take Me Naked. Like the Flesh trilogy that will soon follow, this film also features some brutal violence, but like me, after a few too many whiskeys, it takes a while to get there. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at Take Me Naked from 1966. This film was written and directed by both Roberta and Michael Finlay, and tells the story of a bum who has an unhealthy obsession with his neighbor. That's Roberta Finlay, by the way. This bum, he fantasizes about the things that she must be doing over there in her apartment. Getting undressed, showering, uh, massaging herself. And quite a lot of the film is just this, his imaginings of what she must be doing over there by herself. I mean, he obviously can't see any of this stuff, so it must be in his head. We learn, though, that he isn't just a gross but ultimately harmless peeping time. That head of his is actually quite disturbed. <laughs> At least disturbed enough to bludgeon a fellow bum and friend to death. That's Michael Finlay, by the way. And after this event, the bum's violent proclivities get turned against the woman he's been watching. In his mind, they're having a romantic encounter with flowers, smiles, and pleasant conversation. In reality, their encounter involves assault, a knife, and murder. And that's it. That's the movie. At least as far as plot goes. But it doesn't tell you much about how the movie is put together. I admit that. So let's do that. Well, the movie has three narrators. The Peeping Tom Bum, he narrates parts of it, and we get a peek inside his twisted little mind. My body has been consecrated, and this defilement must now be avenged. Other parts of the film are narrated by his friend and fellow Bum, the, the one he will eventually kill. This friend, again, that's Michael Finlay, uh, he mostly talks about loneliness in this big, dirty city. The loneliness of this self-isolation still empties him, and he feels an occasional desire for another human being to share a part of his perverted life. And he seems to have more of an outside view of this whole situation, so I guess he's about the closest thing we get to an objective narrator. <laughs> Too bad he dies. But a good part of the movie is narrated by a woman, and not Roberta Finlay's character, but an entirely different woman. A woman who is reading 19th century French poetry. Believe it or not, I studied 19th century French poetry. <laughs> what a waste of time. The poems here in Take Me Naked are from the Songs of Belitis by the French poet Pierre Louis. The history of these poems is kind of interesting, but I'm not here to read a Wikipedia page to you. You can do that on your own. I will just say that the poems are kind of funny, uh, pretty interesting, and very lesbian. Why am I become lesbian, O Belitis, thou ask me? But what player of the flute is not a lesbian, in some degree? And their inclusion in the movie turned the film into this kind of, eh, a little bit pretentious, art house style film. <laughs> I bet you didn't expect that from the Finlays. Well, that's about all there is to the movie. Let's talk some highlights. Well, this movie is more historically interesting than good. Roberta Finlay is cool as hell, so it's nice seeing her in a starring role. And not to mention this being her first co-writer and co-director gigs. Well... At least as far as for films that have survived. She did direct a film before this when her and Michael were in Belgium, but when Michael sent that film back to the States, it was seized by customs for being objectionable. So, Roberta Finlay's directorial debut has been lost to history thanks to the moral police. Ugh, they're almost as bad as the normal ones. Another historical point, it is kind of cool seeing the Finlays find their voice, so to speak. Sure, they weren't the first to make roughies. Uh, they weren't even the first to make roughies that included murder. Uh, the Olga films had done that a few years previous. But they did have their own style and sensibilities, which will come out more prevalently in the next two years with their Flesh trilogy. Uh, but we see the beginnings of those sensibilities here. I mean, none of these highlights suggest that the film is worth watching on its own merits, because honestly, it's not. 
Like a skid row beauty from next door, it has some shortcomings. Well, the photography here is sometimes good. You know, these sort of stark and clear black and white images. Uh, but quite often they went way too far with their smearing effect. I mean, look at this. I know they were trying to make it look dreamy to accompany the poetry reading, but the end result is rather unappealing. Even aside from the poetry. I mean, and this isn't even me messing with the image to make it suitable for YouTube. This is what the movie looks like for part of the time. Not a fan. Uh, there is a familiar face in that smear. That's uh, Darling Bennett. Uh, watchers of this channel last saw her in Olga's Girls and the Doris Wishman film Bad Girls Go to Hell. So yeah, she was a rather prolific actress in the sexploitation scene in the 60s. And she is quite beautiful. It's really too bad she isn't very well photographed here. The music is more or less okay, at least part of the time, and near the end of the film you can spot a few bars from Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, and that's pretty fitting. And yes, I can identify classical music by ear. You think because I watch nudie films I'm not cultured? Please, I watch nudie films because I am cultured. But, haute couture aside, the music, and the narration for that matter, just isn't very good. For the most part, the music is pretty bland, and for the most part, the narration is rather pretentious. Even more pretentious than a person that says haute couture. I mean, the images in the film, you know, when they're around the city and stuff, are pretty cool for the most part. You know, it feels really sort of scuzzy, and that's nice. I just wish it had a better soundtrack to go along with that. If copyright law is allowed for it, I would remix this movie with maybe some Stephen Jesse Bernstein. It's midnight and the sunglasses twirl. My injuries a deaf plant warped in a Hollywood rockery of juice cans and hypodermic needles. It's so cool, baby, you don't know what you need. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch the hell out of that. So, do I recommend watching this movie? Well, no, not really. I do think the film is interesting in various ways. Uh, seeing the scuzzy look in New York of the 60s is pretty cool. Roberta Finlay is obviously pretty cool, so it's nice to see her in a starring role. But ultimately, the film is just interesting from that historical perspective I was talking about before. Here we have the Finlays finding that voice that will, in the coming years, make them rather notorious. But none of this suggests the film is worth watching on its own merits, because it's not. Uh, this one is for diehard Finlay fans, you know, like me, and for us students of nudie film history. And that's about it.